Hey guys, welcome back. So I guess what we're called is a digital nomad. And as cringy as that term sounds, we do live wherever we want because we work from our laptops. So we thought we'd tell you our five favorite places to live and work on a budget. Starting off at number five, Georgetown, Malaysia. Now this is not a place that's very high on many people's lists. In fact, I've never even heard it spoken about. It's a very livable place for 1,000 pounds a month. And it's got lots of cool street art, bars, cafes, and with it being a city, you can take advantage of some of the modern high-rise apartments, gyms, workspaces, and great Wi-Fi speeds. So we shared an apartment with some friends which made it a little bit cheaper, but accommodation around Georgetown and around Penang is a little bit more expensive than the rest of Malaysia, so that's why it's down at number five on our list and it's not higher up. So Georgetown has a vast range of cool and interesting activities to do in your spare time. Penang Hill is the perfect place for a sunrise and you can travel up the mountain by funicular. You can also hike it but it'll probably take around two to three hours each way. Um, we also visited the Upside Down Museum which was a lot of fun and there's also a big national park on Penang Island with some really stunning beaches and boardwalks. You should definitely go and explore the biggest temple in Malaysia too. This was by far one of our favourite things to do here so make sure you get the lift right up to the top to see the amazing Buddha statue. Don't miss that out because that was amazing. They also have a football team but when we went to watch them they were pretty <laughs> but we'll give a full list of things that we did in Penang just down below in the description. But for now, number four. And number four is Koh Tao. Now Koh Tao is one of our favourite places we've been to and it's one of the cheapest places in the world to go diving. If you're learning, it will cost you around £260 to qualify over three days. Or if you just need a refresher course or a fun dive, these were as little as £22. So we stayed at Hydronauts Dive School, which had great private rooms for about £10 a night. And that included a desk and a large workspace downstairs by the beach. The cafe was also super cheap, with coffees being probably around one pounds, and the restaurants in the bay served amazing local food for around three pound a meal. There are also a few co-working spaces on the island for around a hundred pounds a month, or alternatively, you can venture up into the hills and pick a cool cafe overlooking the view. The ones we visited were very quiet, and some we were the only people there, so it's perfect for working or taking calls. Koh Tao really excels here when we're talking about things to do. We could literally spend months on this island. There are quite a few decent gyms, fun hikes, stunning beaches, great restaurants, and there's lots of opportunities for crazy nightlife as well. It's also close to Ang Fong National Park, Koh Samui, and Koh Phang Yang, which is where the famous full moon party is held. Now talking of Koh Phang Yang, this place probably needs a special mention. We say when it was really busy, and we've heard from numerous people that Koh Phang Yang is even better than Koh Tao as a destination to live as a digital nomad. It has good dive spots, stunning beauty, and way more sophisticated workspaces and gyms. So this is likely somewhere we'll be going soon to spend a lot of time. But number three on the list is Nusa Lembongan. So it's not very well known compared to Nusa Penida, Bali, or the Gili Islands. So it makes it super quiet. If you don't like tourist destinations, then this is the place to come. However, saying that, it isn't the best place to make friends and socialise, as most tourists here aren't long term. Now, Lembongan and Seningen also have cool spots for things like surfing, cliff jumping, crazy golf, but they also have quiet beaches in places like Mushroom Bay, where there's really nice restaurants. Now, the snorkelling is amazing around the Noosa Islands, with loads of manta rays and turtles swimming about. So for accommodation, you're probably looking at around £300 a month for homestay with a pool. So there aren't any apartments with a kitchen, but you won't really find this a problem because the food here and the quality of the food is just amazing. So on Lombongan and Selingan, they also have so many cafes and restaurants which are overlooking the sea. They have great Wi-Fi, so it just makes it a perfect destination for digital nomads to work from. Yeah, and Lamongan is only 30 minute boat ride away from Bali. So if you want to escape all of the mainland tourism, then it's a perfect, perfect place to base yourself from. But now coming in at number two is our favorite city so far. It's what I like to call the Barcelona of Southeast Asia. It's Da Nang. So in this city on the beach, we're currently spending 700 pounds a month. And for that, we can go surfing. We have a really nice apartment. We have a fancy gym membership 
and pretty much all of the healthy fresh food that we want to eat. And we can also just drive around to such nice places on our cool motorbikes. So Vietnam is such a beautiful country. It's filled with diverse culture, landscapes and many food options. So you could live anywhere in Vietnam as a digital nomad, but what makes Da Nang so unique is a few things. So it's a 30 minute drive away from Hoi An, which is an ancient town, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. We'd probably recommend spending a few days here. And then just west of Da Nang, you also have the Banner Hills, where for £30 you can go and visit the Golden Hands Bridge, ride in cable cars and spend all day at the theme park. Now one of our favourite things about Vietnam though is getting out on a motorbike. Exploring Vietnam properly and Da Nang is definitely a great place to do this. Now we recommend spending three to five days doing the Golden Loop planned out by Tom Divers on Vietnam Coracle website. So this loop takes you all the way from Da Nang up the High Van Pass that was made famous by Jeremy Clarkson and his Top Gear friends. You go to Hue and then you go all the way inland to central Vietnam. And now this place is really, really unique and different to the beach area. You then loop all the way back around to Hoi An, which is one of the places we say you definitely have to go, and then come up the beach. It's a really nice drive all the way back to Da Nang. So we're gonna link the blog below because it's genuinely one of the most spectacular blogs I've ever seen. Uh, so definitely use it if you're coming to Da Nang. So now, before we show you number one on our list, there are so many beautiful places in Southeast Asia to travel to, which you can also work from. We have a list on our channel of many videos we've created in each place. So we recommend you go watch them, see if it's for you and see if you can work from those areas. And we also include a cost breakdown at the end of every video. So you'll be able to see how much we've spent whilst we've been there living and working, which might be very useful. But for now, coming in at number one, is Changu. Now Changu is number one on many people's lists for a lot of reasons, but for us we believe this place is like heaven and hell. In our opinion it has a lot of downsides, but at the same time it does have the most upside. It has the most digital nomads, it has the most western restaurants, the most cafes, and the most variety of accommodation, and it also has some amazing surfing. But all of this does come at a price. It definitely has the most holiday tourists, and the highest prices of anywhere else on this list. But what we love about Changu is a few things, with number one being that the Balinese people are the kindest people we have ever met in the world. So number two is being near a surf beach is something that we really want. Then number three is the food and cafe culture is next level here. It's so nice, the food quality is just amazing. So number four is they have some of the best co-working spaces with a lot of like-minded people but that's if you can find them against all of the pretentious ones. But other than that, number five is the level of luxury in all of the gyms. So Nirvana Health Club in Changu is 150 pounds a month. You do, it is quite expensive, but you do get super high level facilities with ice baths, saunas, steam rooms, a large pool, there's an inside and an outside gym, and there's also classes included. So here are our five favorite places so far to live and work in Southeast Asia. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and we'll answer them for you as soon as possible. But please guys, go and subscribe, press that button below, because that means you won't miss any of the 2024 guides and cost breakdowns that we've got coming up. And next up is Vietnam, which is definitely, definitely... <coughs> so next up we've got Vietnam, and I promise you this is one that you're not going to want to miss.